Hi, Julian. My name is Nazari Shamansky. Hello. I'm working at uh, Luxoft as an engineer and uh, as a trainer also. I'm glad to have an opportunity to have a talk with you. I know that uh, you have been working on Scala for a long time with uh, Martin Odersky. Uh, in what projects uh, do you think uh, this language uh, should be used for? Um, thank you first for inviting me and um, uh, having this conversation. I, I'm very happy to, to be talking to you today. Um, so um, in regards to where Scala fits the best, um, I think up to a couple of years ago, I would have said on the backend or server side programming, uh, roughly where, where Java shines today. So wherever the Java uh, virtual machine can run, uh, Scala would be a good fit. Um, so that would notably exclude the, the front end. But um, uh, as, as you know, probably uh, in the last couple of years, there's a new backend for Scala called Scala.js that compiles Scala, the Scala language to JavaScript so it can run in the browser. And this has proved to be quite successful. So, so now I would change that answer and I would say um, both the front end and the back end. And that's a very powerful combination because you can use the, um, uh, the language and skills that you have uh, for, for, both, for both sides of, of the application. Uh, probably uh, places where Scala wouldn't be the best fit today are still, uh, let's say, more systems level programming, um, things where you would normally use C, uh, or command line utilities where the startup time of the Java virtual machine is a problem, even though there are some workarounds there as well. Uh, and then there's a, there's a new emerging field where, where Scala shines, and I think that's also part of the reason why, why we're having this, uh, this discussion today is, is big data. So Scala being a functional language, it's especially well suited for treating data, um, and, and Spark has made that um, uh, sort of, has put Scala on the map of big data technologies. So I would say now these these three areas are where where Scala. Well, it's a general purpose language, so of course mm -hmm. you could use it in, in many places. Okay. So in, in regards uh, to Spark, uh, what language would you recommend to use for building Spark applications? So um, of course, uh, my first choice would always be Scala, and and that's for several reasons. Um, the first one is that Scala is uh, a, a very good language for for working with data, especially in uh, in a context of parallelizing and and pure pure data crunching. Um, but the, um, another important reason is that Spark itself is developed in Scala, so you basically get access to all the, the basically the, the new features, everything that comes up in Spark um, will be first available in Scala, even though the, the Spark team goes to great lengths uh, of offering the same API across languages, I think that th there will always be a slight, um, uh, let's say, uh, advantage in using the same language as, as the platform itself. Um, I think Python is uh, also a great choice for, for data scientists, especially since they, they do have uh, a lot of knowledge invested in, in Python. So, but I wouldn't recommend uh, Python over Scala, especially for applications that are uh, more than just exploratory. So where you mm -hmm. actually want to develop a product. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I know that you're planning to give a workshop in Russia at spring. Uh, so the next question is, uh, which uh, cluster manager do you prefer in your uh, projects and uh, what will you use for demonstrations at the training? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So I've been um, usually going for uh, for the Mesos deployment. So uh, Mesos is this general purpose uh, cluster manager. And uh, I like that approach because you can mix your, your loads with, um, I mean, you can have your Spark jobs running alongside other applications in your, uh, 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 in, in your company, let's say. And, and Mesos is, uh, is growing, so it's, it's a new project started from the same uh, university, Berkeley, that created Spark, so from the same lab. So th there's, there's some synergy there. Um, so, but for the workshop, because we have only one day and we need to, to learn quite a lot of things, um, I will be going for the local deployment mode. So people can, with zero setup and zero, um, uh, let's say, friction, can start running their Spark jobs and um, uh, see the results quickly. Okay, 
Um, so what Spark API, uh, will you give the most attention during the training? Okay, so um, since this is just one day, uh, my main focus will be in getting the basics and the fundamentals right. So once, mm -hmm. once people get the right uh, mental model of how Spark works, I think they can very easily expand that to the other libraries. So uh, to answer directly, uh, we will spend a lot of time understanding um, the, the RDD API and the partitioning and, and how things happen under the hood. Uh, and once we have these fundamentals, we can move on to higher level APIs. So, so I would say Spark SQL is, um, is extremely important to know well. Uh, so these, these two things will be the focus. Okay, thank you. Uh, are you planning to give some examples of uh, when the different data formats supported by Spark uh, should be used? Uh, of course, yeah. So we will discuss about um, data ingestion. So what kind of uh, data you can read and, and write with Spark, especially from Spark SQL. So this would be like the second part of the, of the course. And we'll see, um, yeah, we, we will discuss this uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, what do you think about uh, Spark modules like uh, streaming, uh, graphics, and machine learning? Are you planning to mention them during the training? Uh, definitely, we will, uh, we will mention them, so we'll talk about them. I think we will not have time to actually uh, go and do exercises or, or use uh, these additional modules, but I think they're very important to know about, um, first, for the actual algorithms and features they offer, and second, um, because they show uh, how Spark works with the building blocks of RDDs, so these fundamental building blocks into uh, building and composing higher level uh, services on top of it. So that's, I think that's important to see. Um, Spark streaming is an extremely interesting uh, project and streaming in general is a very competitive uh, landscape today because there are many solutions and, and many players in there. Um, I know that Spark SQL has, uh, sorry, Spark Streaming has changed their API or they're looking at, um, at a different way of doing things. So um, I would definitely keep an eye on that. Um, and the other machine learning, of course, um, it's, it's extremely interesting as well because a lot of people do big data because they want to leverage um, uh, machine learning algorithms and insights in their data using machine learning. So. Um, we'll, we'll mention this, uh, we will not be uh, extensively using them. But um, as I said, my goal for the training is that people understand, have a good mental model of, of how Spark works. So then uh, if they need this uh, later on, they can uh, easily grasp it on their own uh, and get, go more in depth. Okay. And what do you think about uh, commercial vendors that are providing big data uh, distributions and they are including also Spark, for example, in their uh, uh, commercial offerings. What do you think are the strong and weak sides of using such vendor uh, offerings? Um, I, think, I think there's a place for, for such offers. I would say um, it really depends on, on the kind of business uh, you're building. If you are, let's say, a local newspaper um, that are that you're publishing in your uh, in your region, let's say a city. Uh, even though these are less and less, unfortunately, they're they're going away. But let's say that um, you are such a newspaper, you probably do not have uh, the money to build a big data team that can build products um, that that can learn and 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 do such a thing on on your own. So in that case, I think it makes sense to go for a commercial service that gives you uh, an off-the-shelf product. However, if, if this is more central, central to, your, uh, to your business, uh, you'd probably want to have the control of, um, of tweaking and, and running your own, your own team. In there. So I think it, it really depends on how far you are from, uh, from big data in, in terms of your core business. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So I think that's all questions uh, that I wanted to ask okay. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.